name's Mary Walker. And Hi, Mary. <laughs> this is, we're just going to have fun with this. Okay, so. Uh, right? Hi, Bray. <laughs> <laughs> I'm co-chair of the Multicultural Proficiency Committee. Um, I'm a community member. I've been involved in the community in, in different ways for the last 10 years. Um, and I have come to be a part of this committee as as a part of some of my work with the uh, Board of Education. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and my name's Brad Engel, and I'm with the Queen Anne's County Board of Education. This is my 28th year with the school system, and I'm the other co-chair with Mary Walker, and we have been co-chairs together now for a few years. And we wanted to spend some time talking to you today about our multicultural proficiency committee, kind of what we done, what we have done, um, some things that we're currently doing. There's a lot of exciting things that we're doing because we feel like we want to, you know, get the word out. You know, we want to let people know that there are a lot of good people in this community that are working on issues of. Uh, cultural diversity and increasing the amount of cultural proficiency in the county, in the school system, amongst the school staff and our teachers, in law enforcement, and all, all the areas um, in our county. And, you know, and, and I've been a part of this community for a long time, and I know a lot of you, and I, I just feel this is something that is really important, um, you know, that we're doing, and I feel very strongly about the work. And I couldn't be prouder to be working with Mary Walker because she really keeps me going. She keeps all of us going uh, with this effort. And so, <laughs> but we want to have fun with this today. I mean, we have a lot of information to share with you. You're going to meet a lot of people, and it's going to be hopefully an exciting uh, uh, time for all of you. So don't change the channel. Let's uh, see what we have. Give us a chance, okay? Right, Mary? Um, our mission is just to embrace the diversity that is in our county and to um, just give everybody a voice uh, and to, to meet the needs. Um, I don't know, the committee was formed out of, and Brad could talk a little better mm -hmm. to, to, about this than I, but out of a issue that arose in one of the Northern County schools. And um, people started to get together and mm -hmm. talk. Mm -hmm. Wow, how amazing. <laughs> well, we know that we know that this is a really uh, a timely topic. We know that um, nationally there are a lot of things of great concern that are going on. Um, this this multicultural proficiency committee is part of the local management board, and so it was started a number of years ago. And I know Mike Clark and Vincent Rasta kind of got things going with Joan Brooks, and there are a lot of people that kind of worked hard to get this committee started. And uh, Mary and I uh, were asked by by Mike. Uh, to sort of take over the, the chair responsibilities. We did that and, uh, you know, we have added some people to the group that have really created a sort of a dynamic, uh, you know, family of people that are really working hard on this issue. So um, we're very excited about things and, uh, you know, we're going to, you know, we're going to talk about some things today that aren't always, you know, necessarily easy to talk about but we think are important. And I was being a little facetious about we're talking. Um, I find that people stop talking and they talk at one another and they talk about one another, but they don't talk with one another and that's when things kind of break down. So I mean that's my reason for being on this committee is to start having people talk with one another, not about one another, not to mm -hmm. one another, but to to have that conversation that goes back and forth so there's an understanding. I, I don't think we understand enough about each other. Yeah. Conversations were just to do that, to start people talking about race. There's, when, when you talk, start talking about race, people you know, kind of clam up. Yeah. Is there race, you know, are people racist? Or is there racism? Yeah, wake up, there, there's racism. And the reason we don't, t because we don't talk about it, we can't dispel it. We can't, we can't um, work. So anyway, these conversations, we did, the first one was just community. Let's get the movers and shakers in the community together and start having this conversation. And it worked out wonderfully. And, you know, people were excited. And, and we had people who've been at ta different tables talking about and at people for years who came together and talked with people and they were amazed. 
So that was the first one. Second one, we say, well, everybody goes after the religious community when, when they're trying to do something like this. And uh, so we said, well, well, let's get those movers and shakers in. And, and we got, got them in, and they, you know, surprise, surprise, racism exists everywhere, mm -hmm. even in the churches. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was another, you know, wake up. I always say light bulb, come on. But at any rate, um, the third one mm -hmm. was the um, okay. educators. Mm -hmm. Does racism exist in the school system? Yes, it does. So we got people talking together, uh, not about each mm -hmm. other again, but with each other. And that was a light bulb situation that's going on. Yeah, we, we've had a lot of light bulb situations. Yeah. And has been really. Well, and, and, and that's the point is, you know, when you start talking to people and they want to come back at you with a, an answer and did, never heard what you're saying, mm -hmm. then it's, it's wasted effort. Mm -hmm. if, if everybody sits and listens and then comes back, well, I, didn't, I never understood it that way, or I didn't see it, I don't see it that way. Mm -hmm. That's when some growth happens. Yeah, 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 and I certainly have learned a lot as well, participating in just hearing from you know, some of the other participants. Well, I just feel like, you know, these are, you know, conversations that we're having with each other uh, that we may not have had before. Uh, and it's an opportunity to try to open some minds. I mean, we're not going to, you know, change things overnight. And it's, and, it's, and it's a process. This is a beginning of a process. Uh, to, so people can sort of share what's in their hearts about how they feel. I mean, I, I sat next to a woman, an African-American woman, who said that she uh, worked, you know, at a retail store and that when she would give money and change back to people, they wouldn't touch her money because of her skin color. I was shocked, you know, and, and so, you know, these are the kinds of things that you talk about uh, at these events and, you know, they've been very helpful to me. Selfishly, I probably think I've learned more than anybody um, and I feel like in this past you know, since we've been doing the Sunday suppers and having these conversations, you know, my growth has, it, my personal growth has really, you know, leapfrogged. Um, so I, I think we want to continue doing these, you know, and I think we want to continue having these conversations. They're not easy. You know, it's not easy to talk about race. It's easy to talk about poverty. It's easy to talk about economics. It's easy to talk about violence. But to talk about race is hard. You know, we have to kind of get away from dancing around the topic and just really have those heart-to-heart convers -heart conversations. Well, and uh, there's a lot, there's been a lot of denial that's going on mm -hmm. over the years is, you know, are pe is there racism? Are people racist? You know, mm -hmm. and I'm talking either side. Yeah. And, and I think with recent events in, in our country, we are well aware that racism exist now. Mm -hmm. We can't go and say, well, oh, that, that was the 60s, that was the 50s, that doesn't happen anymore. It's alive and well, and this is the time to nip it in the bud. And it's, gonna, it's not going to happen with legislation, it's not going to happen with new laws, it's going to happen in the, with individuals, one person at a time mm -hmm. that stands up and says, no, I'm not going there anymore. Just personally, I can't make you change mm -hmm. but I'm not going to do that any longer mm -hmm. and and I think that's how it's going to change. I'm Lee Franklin I'm a member of the local management board and mm -hmm. on several committees um, in the county that uh, focuses on families and children. I was a teacher in Queen Anne's County at Kennard Elementary School. I was the enrichment specialist there for 13 years and love my job and I miss the children. <laughs> All my great students. But I have your pictures on my refrigerator. Uh, my name is Ann Parolik and um, I have lived in Queen Anne's County for 35 years now, I think. Um, raised my children here. We were part of the uh, school system here. I was in the PTA. And um, I've just gotten involved in this committee in terms of the Sunday suppers because I'm very interested in uh, encouraging 
um, talk between people of different cultures and different races. It's something that um, I don't think I've understood very well in my life. And I really wanted to become more familiar with what's really happening in terms of race and racism. So I'm very happy to be part of this Sunday Supper Committee. I'm Phil Stapleton. Um, I guess I'm a relative newcomer to Queen Anne's County. I've only lived here for 20 years. Um, before, before retiring, I was an environmental consultant, so uh, that's that's where I came from. You're a from chicken necker. Yes, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I joined the MCP fairly recently, I guess. Um, and Mary was making some reference earlier to events that took place in the country here in the last couple of years. I guess what drove me to do this was, you know cogitating on those events and trying to figure out is there something I can do to try to help out to improve the way that we deal with each other here in the county and elsewhere and the multicultural committee seemed like a good opportunity to do that. Um, well I think the biggest thing that surprised me is uh, the eagerness of people around the tables to really talk about and share very personal experiences and feelings with uh, people who they've never met before. So it's the openness of the people that um, really surprised me. And, and it's interesting when, uh, when the discussions end, I really think that um, the people at each table feel very close to each other. <laughs> They feel like, wow, we had the best table and we're such good <laughs> friends now. It's, true. It's, it's just, it's amazing how close you become when you're um, given the freedom to just sit and talk with people. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with Lee. Um, that's the same experience I had. It's just the atmosphere becomes so charged with the eagerness of everybody to just share. And everybody's so open. And I think one of the reasons is because the structure of the Sunday supper is very conducive to people being comfortable and feeling safe. Um, people sit at a table with eight to nine people at a table. And the tables are, um, they are organized in such a way that they're diverse. So there are different people from different cultures, different races. Um, at each table so that <clears throat> we can and get an understanding and gender too yes mm -hmm. get an understanding from people that are different than us and um, I think that the safety element is brought in by having a facilitator at the table who um, helps direct the conversation not in not giving people anything about what they're supposed to say but just make sure that everybody gets to say something and so it all feels very inclusive and I think for me, personally, I've just learned so much in just this short amount of time. I think we've had the three suppers. And I really, there's so much I don't know about racism. There's so much I don't know about what people experience in my own country that's so different from what I have experienced. And it's just, like Mary said, it's been a light bulb. And I think one of the things that um, I think happens is you become more empathetic when you understand what's going on in somebody else's life. If you don't have any idea about it, you can't be empathetic. You go along and you think, well, this is the way I live, so this is the way everybody lives. And I found out through these Sunday suppers that that's not the case. And uh, it's been eye-opening for me. And I, I'm eager to have other people have this experience, to get this feeling that I have of now finally understanding what it's like for other people and having that empathy. And it's, it's been just it's a wonderful experience for me. I hate to have to agree with Lee and Ann on so many things. <laughs> but it has really been amazing to me that you can sit down at a table of people that, in my case, have mostly been complete strangers, and that people are willing to talk about some pretty sensitive issues and happy to do it, and that we have an interesting discussion at the table, and mm -hmm. everyone seems perfectly fine doing that. Um, it'd be nice if 
that happened all the time in our community rather than just mm -hmm. at the Sunday supper, but maybe we'll get there eventually. Yeah, um, I think that's what we're hoping for. Yeah, yeah, the other thing that's been amazing to me is getting to hear some of the life stories of some of the folks involved in this process mm -hmm. yes. and the things that they have to deal with that I have just been completely oblivious to in some cases. And uh, it's hard for me to believe in some cases that these things are still going on in 2016, but yes. here we are. Nice. <laughs> um, well, I, I don't, I, I feel that I don't want to have expectations or um, uh, because I don't want to direct whatever happens in any way. Um, Ann and I have been talking about the hope that these can just, whatever happens, uh, be organic and what comes from the Sunday suppers just flows from from uh, where people are and what they, what they would like to see happen. Um, you know, I would love for, um, you know, may maybe uh, we, um, we have uh, formed smaller groups where we just meet in people's houses, and then that might um, develop into, you know, parties that you have together, then projects, maybe where we work together. Yeah, I, I know. What do you think, Anne? Well, I think one thing is that the Sunday suppers are very hopeful in, in and of themselves. Um, it's just wonderful that feeling you get of speak of talking with other people. So my hope is that the Sunday suppers would continue, you know, continue in Queen Anne's County, continue um, to encourage more and more diverse um, groups come together to have these co casual conversations. That's one of my hopes. And I think another hope is that um, as we have the Sunday suppers, people who have interests in specific um, specific issues that might might find themselves in the county would want to come together and work on specific things that are close to them and their hearts whether it be something within education or something um, with children and families some sort of thing like that but I think I think the beauty of this kind of almost like a grassroots kind of thing is that people can then follow their own passion. You know, we, like Lee said, I don't think we want to um, have an outcome in mind. I think the outcome is where does this go from the passion that's within mm -hmm. the people that attend? Because it's the conversation itself that is hopeful and encouraging and is something we want to see throughout the whole county. And then, you know, I mean, hopefully, wider than in this county you know really we want this to be something that maybe people could take and work with in in other areas you know so that across the whole u.s we start talking about this in a real honest comfortable safe way well it's it's exciting that it is happening in other places yeah. in the country yeah uh, uh, i think it's the message has come through pretty clearly i think in the three sunday suppers we've held so far that <clears throat> you know while talk itself is important and we need to keep doing that there's also a call to action here, and I think that's another thing that the Sunday Supper Committee is now thinking about. You know, how can we help keep that moving along and provide some support for the sorts of actions that ought to be taken beyond just sitting down and talking about, you know, here's our problems in the, in the country and here in Queen Anne's County. Mm -hmm. So look yeah. for more on that. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. So, Mary, maybe we can um, let the people out there know what the future plans are that we have and how people can join in this conversation on race, which will be an ongoing thing for, we hope, quite a long time. All right. Um, one of the things we're doing is planning a th fourth Sunday supper, which may not be on Sunday, but it, it's going to be in February, and it's going to be, uh, it's going to include public service folk. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there's a Facebook a group now talking about race that you can join just you know give us a, and it's closed but we're, we're inviting friends to, to, to come and then um, we are talking about what are the next steps you know one of the things we do real good is talk <laughs> we talk and we talk and we talk again so people really would like to see something happen. 
and so on that page we're going to have a next steps meeting um, January the 16th we don't have all the details on it but it's going to be an evening maybe potluck we're going to find a location and if you want to come out and talk about what do you see as the next steps for a group yeah we're going to continue to talk but we'd like to do something other than talk to so at any rate and anybody who wants to get uh, on our list and uh, we do have an email address it's qac sunday suppers at gmail.com no no dots or anything qac sunday suppers at gmail.com um, you can send us an email and we'll put you on the list for notices about what we're doing in January or future events or if you have comments or questions or suggestions we would love to receive them and help us uh, expand what we're doing and I'd like to invite young people not, not that this group isn't young <laughs> <laughs> younger <laughs> younger but <laughs> we would like to get some energy the energy of young people involved um, in, in this it, it, it's it's I think what happened, I was talking to young people today that the young people took over this movement in the 60s. That's what we're looking, it's probably gonna happen again, that the young people are gonna take up this, this banner with, the, with some of the support of the older generation, but we're looking for younger people. So please come out and join us in any way that you can. Mm -hmm.